she was built to vanish, to slip past the eyes and ears of the world. And yet every secret costs something. Something that shows up on a ledger, in a hangar, in the tired hands of the men and women who keep her invisible. The B-21 Raider is not just another bomber. It is the answer to a question the Air Force has been asking itself for decades. A question that starts with, how do you make the impossible routine? Tonight, we pull back the black paint and the classified covers and ask the hard question. What did America buy when it decided to bet on a new stealth bomber? And what had to be given up in return? In this video, we will walk through the Raiders' price tag, the lessons learned from the beat of spirit, the stealth upgrades that border on science fiction, the maintenance nightmare they swore they would solve, the engines that power its future, and finally, how the B-21 fits into a battlefield that is becoming less about single acts of heroism and more about being part of a humming network of machines. Stick around, because by the end, you will understand why the B-21 might be the most practical and most emotional weapon America has ever tried to build. Stealth has always been expensive, not only in dollars, but in patience, in secrecy, and in the quiet obsession with tiny details. The B to Spirit taught us this lesson the hard way, an icon that cost billions to develop, and then demanded hours and hours of fragile, meticulous maintenance just to fly. The Air Force learned, painfully, that you can make something invisible to radar and still have it crippled by the realities of life inside hangars and maintenance bays. When Northrop Grumman began designing the B-21 Raider, the Beta was never far from anyone's mind. Not as an inspiration, but as a cautionary tale. The goal changed subtly but profoundly. This time, the task was not to create a museum piece, a one-of-a-kind marvel that dazzles on the runway. It was to build a durable field tool something you can mass-produce, sustain, and rely on for decades. The stated target, $550 million per aircraft in 2010 dollars, roughly $692 million today when adjusted for inflation, was a political and engineering promise. A guardrail meant to stop runaway cost growth before it strangled the program. But here is the thing about promises in defense procurement. Especially promises wrapped in classification, they are easy to make, hard to verify. The B-21 program, like the B-2 before it, lives under a veil of secrecy, which makes it difficult for the public to track and for watchdogs to hold it to account. Still, the intention was clear, and the choices that followed were shaped by a single, stubborn idea, make stealth cheaper to own, not just to develop. When the Raider finally stepped into public view in December of 2022, some eyebrows rose. Many saw a smaller silhouette and said it looked like a B to clone, a B to V to point zero, that reaction is understandable, but it misses the point. Size is not the same as capability. The b 21s reduced wingspan, about 130 to feet compared with the B-2's 170 to feet, and a significantly lower empty weight, were deliberate choices. Engineers traded sheer size for smarter stealth and operational flexibility. Here's why that matters. Stealth is not about being big and imposing. Stealth is about shaping what enemy sensors see. The relevant metric is not wingspan, but effective scattering area, ESR, the measure of how much something shows up on radar. The B-1 Lancer could be compared to a car on radar, large and obvious. The B-2 shrank that signature to something like a golf ball, and the B-21, the military teases, approaches the radar signature of a mosquito. That is not hyperbole. It is the arithmetic of design and obsession with surfaces, seams and signatures, technological advances in sensors, signal processing, and multi-band integration means stealth needs to be smarter, not just bigger. The B-21's compact shape is paired with materials, an architecture designed to reduce signatures across radio frequency, infrared, and acoustic ranges. Imagine every bolt, every seam, every joint being rethought so the plane is quiet in more ways than one, not only to radar, but to heat seekers and acoustic rays. The result, in theory, is an aircraft that is far harder to find from every bearing and at every frequency on of the largest and least glamorous cost of the B-2 was not in flight, but in the workshop. Low observable materials were fragile. They cracked and flaked, and after test flights, repairs added up. The Government Accountability Office famously noted that a large chunk of the Spirit's maintenance hours were devoted to keeping stealth coatings and materials intact. That is time, it is money, and it is a vulnerability. Every minute spent fixing a bomber is a minute it is not available to deter or fight. The B-21 was designed to cut that out of the life cycle from the start. Instead of coatings that required climate-controlled hangars and constant touch-ups, 
The Raiders designers emphasized durable materials and integrated design solutions that reduce maintenance hours per flight hour. That matters because it changes what stealth is in practice. From an exotic museum piece that needs pampering to a reliable tool that can be kept ready, serviced, and deployed rapidly, but make no mistake, durability does not mean the end of secrecy or the end of care. Low observable features remain delicate by nature, and the beat when he once promised is not that maintenance disappears, but that it becomes manageable. That is a cultural shift in how the Air Force thinks about its bombers, moving from paranoia-driven preservation to pragmatic sustainment. Many observers worried that a smaller bomber would have a shorter range. That shrinking size meant shrinking reach. That worry is rooted in a literal reading of wings as fuel tanks, but it misses the big picture. Range is a product of several variables, fuel fraction, aerodynamics, engine efficiency, specific fuel consumption, and mission profile. The relevant metric is how efficiently the aircraft turns fuel into reach and lethality, not the number of square feet it takes up in a hangar. Since the Spirit's debut, engines and systems have improved markedly, mission profiles have evolved, and the nature of strategic bombing has changed. No longer is the primary task to haul massive iron deep into defended airspace. Today, a large share of missions can be accomplished by launching long-range standoff weapons from outside. The densest layers of air defense, weapons like the nuclear-armed AGM-181 LRSO cruise missile and upgraded standoff munitions, let modern bombers strike from safe distances. But the modern battlefield is messy, it is layered, networked, and often opaque. Air defenses combine low-frequency radars, high-resolution infrared systems, passive sensors, and advanced correlation tools making blind standoff strikes increasingly unreliable against some targets. This is why the B-21 is a hybrid by design, a platform that can both sneak close when accuracy demands and launch from afar when prudence requires. It can quietly penetrate to collect intelligence. It can fly into the teeth of an adversary's defenses to strike a hidden command post. Or it can become a launch platform that stays well outside the most dangerous zones. That flexibility is a deliberate compromise and a mature answer to a modern problem. Engines remain a central subject of debate. Early speculation floated the idea of the PW9000 family, derivatives of civilian cores designed for efficiency. Later chatter suggested the Raider might use a modified variant of the F-135 engine, the same power plant that pushes the F-35. The logic is simple, use mature, reliable cores, parts that exist at scale, and that have been tested across demanding platforms. Familiar engines mean easier logistics, known supply chains, and ultimately lower sustainment risk. Equally important is how the aircraft breathes. The deep recessed intakes, the smooth surfaces, the way air is guided into the engines, all reflect decades of stealth design experience. Northrop Grumman, building on a lineage that stretches back to earlier stealth pioneers, has refined intake placement and shaping to hide the heart of the aircraft from detection, while still giving it the breathing space it needs to be efficient. Those little design choices matter when you are balancing stealth, range, and the need to keep costs under control. Perhaps the most revolutionary idea behind the B-21 is not a piece of metal, but an architectural philosophy. The aircraft is not a frozen monolith. It is modular, built around open mission systems that allow upgrades and new components to be added without tearing the entire platform apart. Think of it like installing an app update on your phone. Instead of rebuilding the phone from scratch, this open architecture is a force multiplier because it means the B-21 can evolve with electronics, sensors, and weapons, keeping pace with technological change without the cost of a new airframe. This approach echoes the thinking behind the next-generation air dominance effort, where fighters and systems are planned as nodes in a broader, connected mesh. The B-21 is not intended simply to fly and drop bombs. It is designed to be a backbone in a single network, a platform that shares data, receives unauthoritative updates from multiple sources, and helps create a common battlefield picture. The wars of the future, the Air Force says, will be network-centric, where connections matter as much as individual platforms. What about scale? The Air Force's preliminary plan calls for a fleet of roughly 100 B-21s, with an estimated program cost development, procurement, and operations of around $23 billion over 30 years. That is not a small number, and it is five times the number of Beta Spirits ever built. The logic is strategic, not aesthetic. The Beta became an icon, a technological showpiece that proves stealth works. 
The B-21 is intended to be a workhorse, a practical tool that underpins operations across the globe. A bomber you can build, sustain, and scale. This shift in philosophy is profound. Instead of singular masterpieces, the Air Force now favors resilience, repeatability, and adaptability. That means making trade-offs, accepting that perfect invisibility is less valuable than reliable, maintainable stealth that can be produced at scale. It means embracing networked warfare, where survivability is enhanced not just by hiding, but by being part of a system that senses, informs, and counters threats in real time. So what did America get when it funded the B-21? A compromise, but a smart one. A smaller bomber that is stealthier across more spectrums, an aircraft designed to be repaired, upgraded and fought with, not treated like a fragile relic. A platform meant to be a backbone, a node in a battlefield mesh that values data exchange as much as bombs. It is everything the Air Force said it wanted after learning the lessons of the B-2. An airplane that is less about singular brilliance and more about collective advantage. But questions remain. Will the promised maintenance savings materialize under real-world conditions? Will production stay on track and costs remain manageable? When the classified parts of the ledger are finally opened? And perhaps the most human question. Do we understand the moral and strategic cost of normalizing stealth? Making it the baseline expectation of modern air forces? If this topic made you think differently about the future of air power, let us know in the comments. Tell us whether you believe the Raider will live up to its promises and what trade-offs you would accept in the name of survivability. If you like this deep dive, leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Because next time we will look at how the B-21 might change alliances, deterrence, and the very idea of what it means to project power in the 21st century. Thanks for watching. And remember, technology can make planes invisible, but it cannot hide the choices that built them. We will see you in the next one.